Welcome to Breaking the Couch, a weekly conversation demystifying what happens in and behind the therapy scene to support your healing journey. We're your hosts. I'm Dr. Dowson, a licensed clinical professional counselor, a certified school psychologist, and a trauma specialist with Playfully Psyched. And I'm Dr. Joe Harchi with Soft Heart Psychology, a licensed clinical psychologist. We're here aiming to provide you with mental health tools to address the cycle of generational trauma across the age span from infancy and childhood to adulthood. For more information, visit our Instagram page at Breaking the Couch or our website, breakingthecouch.com. While we hope you love listening to and learning from our podcast, it's not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Back again to break this couch. (laughs) Uh, so you just mentioned offline a really great topic that we're going to introduce today. And that's really, you said it so nicely with like a cute little title. I don't remember. I was just, sure. I was just thinking about your cute little titles for our last few episodes. And I was like, oh, let me be a little bit more creative. And it just kind of came to me as far as like, uh, what was that? Like the non-Disney ending to healing or, and then you said kind of like, what do you say? Like how it doesn't end so happily ever after or something? Mm-hmm. But like not so like not so happily ever after or what happens after mm-hmm. happily ever after, right? Because it always like ends and they lived happily ever after. But like really did they? What was that? What would that look like? Um, yeah, I think that would be really cool for us to talk about. It, it's been on my timeline. Haven't been on social media as much. It's been really swamped, but it has been on the timeline where people have all these preconceived notions about what healing is going to look like. And I think maybe as a field, we therapists haven't, like psychotherapists haven't done the best job of portraying the ins and outs. And so it kind of makes people think like, oh, you're like riding through the meadow or like frolicking in the flowers and you're healed, you know, and all this thing. (laughs) That's the image. Yep. (laughs) And maybe that's not the full picture. So let's talk about it. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think people are feeling like, um, you know, uh, I've done this healing work and now people are telling me I've changed in in, in a negative way. Or, you know, people are saying um, separations or breakups hurt more because I feel more. I'm in touch with my body and I'm in touch with what comes up or... um, you know, going no contact has felt lonelier than I thought. And it's what's right for me. It feels safe in the family. So I hear these messages and I'm like, wow, we really don't prepare people for what the grief comes around with healing feels like. Um, So I just, I, I am appreciative that we can come together and kind of hopefully start to prepare people here. Mm -hmm. Uh, So really good thing that you just brought up is the grief that comes a part of healing. And that is so important because we talk about like ruptures and repairs within relationships. And the way I'm framing grief in a healing process is it's, this is one of those times where a repair isn't possible because the version of you that you were before, so like the unhealed version or the working through it version of you is gone, right? Yeah you have transformed into a more healed version of yourself, a um, more thoughtful, insightful person. And therefore, that older version of you, that former version of you, you're saying goodbye. And it's not saying see you later, right? Because you will never be that person again. Yes, you may have experiences, there may be um, similarities, but you You can't go through a healing journey and remain unchanged, right? And so with that, you kind of hinted into not only are you saying goodbye to a version of yourself that you had known so very well, you sometimes are saying goodbye to some of the relationships that that person or that version of you was also attached to. Mm -hmm. Um, You said something really good offline, and that's that, you know, as we go through the healing journey, sometimes we're saying goodbye to people because they're like, you've changed. Mm-hmm. You know, you used to be like this. It's the connotation. Right? That's what I was trying to say. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. 
and it, they'll sometimes be really explicit about it and like really say like I liked you better before or yeah. you know and then when they're like more more um covert about it think about what they're saying to the message that they're sending is I liked the version of you that was hurting yeah that hurt herself so that I could feel like I could get what I want yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's hard on I mean it is hard on both people right because they're saying goodbye to a friend or someone that they could get support from maybe um because maybe they're not in their growth state but you also knew these people cared about these people um and now you're having to shift what that relationship looks like and it's not just um sometimes it's not just one person right not they don't want to say just lightly because losing even one person can be really really heavy and hard and overwhelming um but sometimes I'm saying it's multiple people in multiple types of relationships in your life, right? It could be blood relatives, adoptive family, felt family, you know, the whole spectrum. And you might be think about a many, many people. Yeah, yeah. And I love when people do say that, you know, we're changing this dynamic and I want us to find new ways to spend time together. Maybe we don't, I'm just going to give an example that's a little lighter. Like maybe we don't come together and gossip anymore. So what are new ways we can like using playfully Sykes, you know, sort of like framework? What are new ways we can play together? Mm -hmm. Are there ways that we can like go have fun instead of sitting here and gossiping? or whatever, right? That's just one example, but there are ways that people can kind of step up as you grow and not mm -hmm. sort of just be like, no, come come back over here, come do what I want, even mm -hmm. though it hurts you or even though it exhausts you or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways, I think. There are, and I'm smiling so big because it made me think mm -hmm. of, so it's, an, so it's another growth point and another like part of the healing journey um i've discussed this with some of my patients before when we get to the point where they are feeling better and feeling like i can um disengage from some of the toxic parts of this relationship and then i'm like okay that's really really great and now we yeah. have now it would be good for us to help you frame how do you then stay in a relationship with someone while leaving the toxic parts behind if they are open to that because what I have found is that without um, some structure or some support, sometimes from a therapist, maybe from other people, um, but without some type of structure support, people can go in this all or nothing, mm -hmm. right? So, like you said, I if the if the if we use gossip and they're like, "Well, I hate gossiping with this person. I don't want to do that anymore," then they'll cut the person off altogether without giving yeah. an opportunity to say, well, maybe we can still engage and have a good time and be in, with each, within each other's company doing a different activity. Maybe I can, maybe I don't have to throw the whole baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> maybe Absolutely. I can you know, clean the baby and throw out the bathwater. Um, so I love that, right? So telling people healing is a bumpy road and it is not linear uh, and it, is sometimes painful right um think about think about when you like have a scab right you, you injure your skin right first the injury hurts and then mm -hmm. there comes a point where the injury doesn't hurt anymore but then it might get really itchy as it's scabbing over right mm -hmm. and then some people pick those things but like it's healing and that's why it's itchy the skin is drying out like it's doing what it needs to do it's not comfortable but but eventually you know you won't feel it anymore, right? It, it'll be healed. The wound will heal. And it's similar to that in this uh, like psychological process and some emotional process. And so even though it's not this like smooth path, you can still keep some people in your life, you know, while you're saying goodbye to some of the activities that you may have done with them in the past. I love that analogy so much. That was perfect. Yeah, I think that that's a really good tip is just to kind of accept the the scabbing over process. And a, another tip I would say would be, you know, to get a, a friend or a therapist or someone in your corner that kind of understands that things are not going to be that same old way. Just at least one person 
a point of connection with somebody so that as you're going through this, if there is somebody who's like, I actually love the new you, or I affirm and validate that you don't want to show up in that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's not like somebody to always like co-sign or like agree with you. It's just somebody who I think like makes space for the, the, best parts of yourself or the parts of yourself that you are trying to to kind of um let shine if you will so i don't know I, I think that having someone in your corner in whatever way that looks like for you could be helpful too and yeah definitely it could be helpful it, it made me think about i guess what we're saying is for, for people to search for people like that right to search for yeah. someone that um but kind of redefining what friendships and relationships look like look like for you so that you can find someone that can be in your corner in that way that can be supportive and validating and affirming. And I, I bring that up because I just kind of think about some of the people that I've worked with and even in my own life, sometimes there's a point where you just don't have those people mm -hmm. in your life. Sometimes there's like a, a starting point or a baseline um after some of the relationships that you've had have flatlined right you might not have anyone that comes to mind that is affirming is comforting it, for whatever those reasons are but i know i've been through that where there was just was like there's nobody um that is so true absolutely and, yeah mm -hmm. so like redefining and figuring out what that would look like and then helping people start to look for characteristics in people because I feel like and I feel what we have what we know and what the evidence shows us is that people often create trauma bonds that they consider lifelong friendships. And while you can have a healthy relationship with someone that you initially bonded over for trauma, often, right, your relationship kind of becomes centered around some reliving or talking about or shared experiences of that trauma. And um, you might not know how to interact when that no longer needs to be the center focus of your life. Um, and so sometimes, so then that's when you're kind of learning. Okay. So what do I like? What do mm -hmm. I need? What gives me joy? What would be playful? What do I think is fun? Right. Um, can I find people that do those things that have share some of those values and those characteristics and that it's not just we're centered around this horrible thing that happened to us or our shared uh, tra trauma histories? Am I making sense? You are making so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that, you know, um, and, and you put it so beautifully. I think I hear that, you know, there are these spaces for for new developments and kind of helping people find or spot those green flags in in people that they want to pursue friendship with or connection with and um that could be so helpful for most of us i mean even starting as really little like what are some of the images we see we see um afap people being mean to each other as the way to connect or like being jealous with one another to as a way to connect so from the from the very beginning we haven't always been like sort of shown ways to notice green flags so i like that you're saying you ask people what they want to welcome in how they want to play um who they love and how they love them. Um, so noting like the positive characteristics or the things that we do want can be super helpful. And I think we have laid out a few like ways of uh, how to deal with this uh, healing scab thing, you know, <laughs> um, just kind of noting that that's a thing, accepting that there's that scab and ways to sort of um, see if there can be new ways of fun and play. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, just for the audience out there, I did want to just clarify. So Dr. Jaharchi said AFAB, so assigned female at birth, or um, people who are gendered and raised as girls usually is kind of what she was describing um, in some of those behaviors. So yeah, I think that that can be really helpful. Um, I hope that it can be really helpful. And again, we would love for people to kind of tell us about it. But I think the major takeaway, or I hope a major takeaway is that yeah, healing isn't just frolicking through the meadow. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> under the rainbow. <laughs> it can be a little lonely. It could be a little, yeah, a little hard for sure. A lot hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're not doing it wrong if it is hard. Because mm -hmm. I think that's another thing that comes up for people. Like, I'm not getting better. I'm losing all my friends. Yeah. Like, you know, let's. It, it, we can validate that your, your your friendships are changing and your people are leaving your life or no longer in your life and you're not, you're not healing the wrong way you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay well i think we've kind of covered just tapped in we're trying to keep our episodes nice and short this season as we prep and say farewell to you all and make sure we're being really helpful Please engage with us on Instagram at Breaking the Couch. Tag us in your stories. Leave comments on our posts and our videos. You can visit our website, breakingthecouch.com, where you can uh, just fill out the little survey that we have, leave comments, ask questions. If there are topic ideas you want us to explore, feel free to let us know. When we discuss books, we put them in the show notes, and you can find the books themselves on our bookshop. That bookshop gives us a little kickback, but it's really to help local bookstores because some of those big conglomerate bookstores or like agencies have wiped out thousands of bookstores across the country and books are important. So we want to get back to the local um, smaller bookshops, bookstores and website. Oh, and then if you ever want to send us a voicemail, we have the capability of doing that too. Find us over on Anchor and uh, that should work out. Until next time. If you are looking for a therapist for yourself or your child, you can visit our websites, playfullypsych.com or softheartpsychology.com. We appreciate you joining us this week and can't wait till there's another opportunity to jump on the couch with you next week.